I'm James Turk of Gold Money, and it's my pleasure to be speaking today with Felix Marina de la Cova, who's a commodity, foreign exchange, and equity trader, and also a contributor to the Gold Money website. Felix, pleasure to be speaking with you today. I'd like to talk about competitive currencies um, in general, um, and I also want to talk a little bit about some of the competitive currencies that are out there, like Bitcoin. Um, you know, it's, I've recently contributed something to the uh, Gold Money website discussing Bitcoin, and I, I know that you're an advocate of Bitcoin. Uh, I'm in favor of competitive currencies. Um, I have some question marks about Bitcoin. I'd like to explore that with you. Uh, what is the attractiveness to Bitcoin in, in your view? I want to see what your thoughts are and where we agree and maybe where we disagree. Well, first of all, uh, James, it's an absolute pleasure to be here talking to you. you. I've always been a great fan. And um, the thing about Bitcoin, well, the thing about competitive currencies in general is that by nature there's going to be a lot of different options and lots of different uh, products out there for people to choose. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Bitcoin um, has a lot of value. Uh, basically, the, the, the idea itself is genius. The purpose is to try to do um, for money and for internet payments what email has done for communications or what blogs have done for journalism. And uh, the way it does it is very, very innovative and uh, deserves a careful look. I know you have some doubts, obviously, and uh, you've spoken uh, a bit about them, but uh, I really think it's worth looking at. Um, the first thing you have to understand that Bitcoin is three things. It's the blockchain, the protocol, and, and, um, uh, and the client, the actual program that runs Bitcoin. The client's not important at all. In fact, the client's not even the better version. And there's alternative clients which have been developed by the people which actually work better than the original Satoshi client. Uh, the blockchain is the record of transactions, which is what ensures that people don't double spend the Bitcoins. And it's sort of, you could call it the history of, um, the, of Bitcoin. And that's probably going to stick around for a long time, even if Bitcoin doesn't succeed or is replaced by something better. The idea of having a public record of all transactions um, is such a genius idea and such a great way to use distributed networking and P2P networking to stop um, and decentralized, um, a decentralized system of stopping double spending. It's such a genius idea that that's going to, we'll see it again in many, many other uses. And the main thing, the actual protocol is such a perfect example of Hayek's emerging order because it's, um, it's a completely voluntary protocol. It's like a language, like a programming language or like a regular language that uh, people agree to use for payments in this case. Yes. It could be for other stuff, it could be for software, but in this case it's for payments. And the actual, um, the actual protocol is the DNA of Bitcoin and it's so well designed, it's almost designed by a gold bug because it emulates the way that gold became money. Um, I know you're going to bring up Mises' regression theorem, obviously. No, I'm not going to bring up Mises. <laughs> I'll bring up something a little bit more fundamental. Um, yeah, first of all, I recognize the points that you're making, and I do think that the preventing the double spend was a, a brilliant um, advancement in the nature of currency. And I take my hat off to Mr. Was it y Yakamoto or Sakamoto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you know uh, the the creativity and the brilliance in what he's put together. Where, where I have issues with is the fact that. Bitcoin is not a tangible asset. Um, you know, if I have a, a piece of silver in my hand or a piece of gold, it's a tangible asset. And if I use that to purchase from you a, a, an asset or some good or service, the exchange is extinguished at the moment that those assets are exchanged for one another. You're giving a tangible asset in return for a tangible asset. But what's happened in the last you know, a few hundred years, is currency has moved from being a tangible asset to being a financial asset. And a financial asset has counterparty risk. There's someone's promise uh, that this currency is going to have value in the future. Of course, and, but how can you use a tangible asset online? This well, you use them online with gold money. The <laughs> tangible asset stays in the vault, mm -hmm. and the ownership of that tangible asset transfers instantaneously when you click it from your holding to someone else's holding, which is the nature of the patents uh, that were eventually you know, granted to me. Because what, what we've done with digital gold currency is we've created a new type of currency. It enables gold to circulate 
without having the payment risk that's associated with having a currency that is itself not a tangible asset. And that's, that's the issue that I have with, with, let me explain it a little bit more. Um, you know, when I was, um, back in the early 1970s, I lived and worked in, in Thailand. And uh, I didn't speak Thai, but I could go to upcountry Thailand and go into a restaurant with a silver coin or go to a merchant and buy you know, food with a silver coin. And we could communicate with one another. I would get uh, the, the food from the, the merchant and they would get the silver coin and the exchange was extinguished. Um, but if I went up there with uh, a diamond uh, or you know, other tangible assets that are not easily understood or easily to, to value uh, in, in general, uh, w transaction wouldn't be done wouldn't be completed. Now, I, I'm not a programmer, and so I don't understand all of the ins and outs of, of, of Bitcoin. I understand fundamentally, but I haven't actually read the programming to see how beautiful it is as people describe it to me, uh, who are programmers. So, you know, I, I have a hard time, you know,